beyond the capital of Egypt during the reign of the famous king Aachen Aton, which is called Aachen Aton, lies two sets or groups of tombs. They are rock tombs cut in the rocks of the area here, the northern tombs and the southern tombs. As for the northern tombs, they were cut out 280 feet above the level of the ground. They belong to the high official and the nobleman who worked for King Aachen Aton. They belong to people like Pa Nahsi, Mary Ra I, Mary Ra II, Amazis, and Huya. One of the greatest pharaohs who created a massive controversial series about religion in ancient Egypt is King Akhenaton. As soon as he declared his animosity towards the cult of Amun, the principal god of Egypt, he found it inevitable to abandon Thebes, the main seat of Amun's religion, and to build himself a new sacred city to set strong foundations for his new creed without any obstacles or traces of old creeds. He chose a fresh area in Middle Egypt where hills are miles away from the shores of the Nile. He marked the boundaries of this sacred area with 14 stele carved in the rocks, bounding himself with his great oath, swearing never to cross these borders forever. His oath says, My oath is the truth, and what I like to say, and I will never like to say it, is void for eternity. The southern stele that lies on the eastern mountain of Achit Aton, the one I stand in front, I will never cross it to the south forever, and may the southwest stele be right across it exactly on the western mountain of Achit Aton. That's how Achit Aton made for each stele in the east another one matching it in the west side. The new city comprised all sorts of constructions needed to build a royal city. It had palaces for him and for his queen Nefertiti, with a lake to enjoy sailing in it privately, and more than one temple dedicated for the cult of Aton. There were houses for the people and storages, and workshops for the artists, including the workshop of Tutmosis, in which the famous head of Queen Nefertiti was found. of Nefertiti has an interesting story. When it was discovered by a German expedition working in Amarna, there was a law forbidding the acquisition of any monumental piece that is unique and has no match. The expedition wanted to move the head to Germany against the law, so they covered it with plaster and other pieces as well, and claimed them to be broken pieces from a complete statue of the queen, which was a lie that caused Egypt to lose the hat for Berlin Museum, where it is still exhibited till today 
away from its home in Egypt. The School of Art in Amarna was founded on the hands of two sculptors called Peck and Uta. They started what's called Amarna School of Art. for the royal family and their art decorated the two great sets of rock tombs lying beyond the city. The northern set of tombs lie on the two sets of hills through which passes a mountainous road in El Sheikh Said, which runs till the valley of Amarna. This set of tombs comprises some of the best and most important tombs like the tombs of Hawa and Miri Ra the first and the second, and Ahmos and Panesi and Ponto. They are cut out in the facade of the mountain that rises 280 feet above Amarna valleys. The set of the southern rock tombs lies at the entrance of a similar valley through which the road passes to the mountain. But in this location, the hills with a vertical facade were not chosen to cut the tombs. Instead, the low side from which the valley rises to the hills behind it was chosen. In both cases, the quality of the rocks was not that great and was less in its quality than the set of the northern tombs. That explains the ruining of the work of art inside the tombs. The tomb of Dudu or Tutu in the collection of the thousand tombs of El Amarna belongs to a high official who worked for King Achen Aton during his reign in Egypt. This person was not beyond the level of suspicion. In matter of fact, his name was written twice in the tablets written by Aziro, warning King Achen Aton from him. King Achenaton at that time was very much distracted by his new religion called Aton. So he did not pay any attention to the poison of this person called Tutu. The tomb of Tutu raises speculations and questions about his identity and true name. For there was a man called Dodo mentioned in the letters exchanged between Akhenaton and Aziro, who puts him in a questioning and suspicious position concerning the degree of his loyalty to his master, King Akhenaton due to his unloyal actions. The facade of the tomb was well cut out in the rocks and was prepared with two mastabas on the two sides of the entrance. Taking into consideration the nature of the rocks, it's good that it kept its original plan of construction and neat carving. of the tomb was supported by 12 columns cut out in the same rock. Only eight remains today, for during the construction of mosques in a much later period, columns were removed and reused inside the mosques in the city.
There are elements of constructions here that are quite unique and seen only in temples. For there are screen walls joining between the columns, which are usually used in temples to allow light to pass through their upper part and illuminate the temple. But here, they seem to support the columns and add a touch of uniqueness to the tomb. side chambers in the tomb to store all the funerary furniture needed for the afterlife of the deceased. The columns represent a bunch of papyrus flowers with closed buds, each tied together with a band below the capital. In the center, the statue chamber is located with steps cut out in stone ending by a place prepared for the statue of Tutu, again a feature of temples. Above the door there is a seal that takes the shape of temple's door seal. It's wonderful to see the ceiling in its good condition blends with the columns and the ground being all cut out in the same rock and is very well preserved till today, taking into consideration that the tomb is 3,300 years old. chamber is cut out under the ground, going deep under the mountain. The aisle is almost one meter wide and ends with an empty chamber, unfinished, as the whole work in the tomb was left unfinished. the middle chamber is the unfinished statue of Tutu, cut out into the same rock of the whole tomb, represented sitting in a chair like a royal member. The bases of the removed columns still exist, witnessing the original location of each of the four taken columns. A side look inside the tomb may show the difficult cutting and polishing massive work done in the tomb with the non-existence of the generosity of making a mistake and ruining the whole tomb. Looking at the cutting and carving difficult work is one thing, and observing the scenes cut out into the rocks with unmatched beauty is another. Magnificent master colored scene is of King Akhenaton sitting in his balcony of his palace, with Queen Nefertiti behind him, enjoying the blessings of the rays of the sun god Aton. King Akhenaton stretches his arms and offering the tomb owner gifts of gold and jewelry.
Toto, who is represented bigger in size than the rest of the people, raises his arms in gratefulness and receives the lavished gifts with honor. occupies the full right side of the rock tomb. The humble employees and workers bend their backs in honor of standing in front of their mighty pharaoh, for King Akhenaton is seen relieved in the biggest size on the wall, leaning forward a bit to address his people and distribute gifts and shower them with his blessings. Rays of his god Aton fell over him with hands holding the Ankh symbol of life, offering it to him. Red and dark blue colors still exist in his painting, and the lines of hieroglyphics displayed in front of him, telling his words on that occasion. The detailed scenes show a lot of activities going on in that festival, when the nobleman are arriving on the back of the horse chariots, and the horseman stands in front of them to hold them, and organize their stop. A door takes a tense shape and going through it we see the kitchen section where a baker bakes bread in front of the oven and meals are prepared. Then comes a turn of beverage servants pouring wine and beer. And finally the dressers stand behind Toto who is represented bigger in size than them to help him wear the jewelry which Akhenaton was bestowing over him. The bottom of King Akhenaton's seat have the carving of the nine famous enemies of Egypt, with their hands tied behind them around the center carving of Sematawi, or the symbol of unification between the north and the south. The cartouche of the king is carved in colors, with hieroglyphics in front of it that says, May he be given life. Another grand scene shows Akhenaton under the rays of God Aton, sitting over his cozy chair and cushion, relaxing one arm and with the other receiving news from his vizier or minister. His double cartouches are ahead of him, and the hieroglyphics explain the occasion. The people attending the event are described according to their ranks, for some bend totally and others just lean forward a little. But in general, they're all in the attendance of not just a pharaoh, but their god is embodied in him and sends his blessings through him. So, it was extremely important to bring Aton to the scene and to make him dominate it. The magnificent scene is indeed the one that portrays the whole grand temple of Aton, standing with a gate and front columns with flags hanging from them, and the court with colored columns behind it, and a division of smaller sections behind with columns too, and priests standing. Storages are at the back, and columns with detailed floral capitals could be seen in blue. All priests are doing their daily work. Names of the pharaoh in cartouches are displayed everywhere which read clearly the word Akhenaton, or the one who is faithful to Aton. Finally, Tutu or Dodo, the tomb's owner, is representing himself right at the gate, welcoming his inevitable fate and journey in the netherworld.